So um, I was just getting kind of bored of digital. I've been, sh I've been shooting digital since I was like probably 14, 15. So I started film in June of 2019. And that was kind of what promoted me to switch. I was just getting bored of digital. I wanted to try something new. And film was kind of, was kind of making, is kind of making like a comeback. So I heard about it and I was like, that's something I'd be willing to try. Film also has a look to it, obviously, that you just can't replicate on digital. So my first film camera I got was a Yashica Mat 124G. And I mostly chose it because it looks cool. <laughs> um, I didn't know really how to shoot it, but obviously you, did, any, you can learn anything on YouTube. So I just looked it up and it turns out it was pretty easy to shoot with. So that was my first camera that I got. Um, my most recent camera that I use, that's like my mostly my go-to now, is my Mamiya RB67. Um, it's a big, heavy camera, but it produces some fantastic images that I'm in love with, so. Yeah, so this is medium format film, which is like bigger than like the 35 millimeter strips, which is like in the box over there. Uh, I like the medium format better because the quality is a lot better. Um, just produces better images, I think. But you also get way less shots on it, though. But there's drawbacks to everything, I suppose. You have to slow down a lot because you have a limited amount of shots. It's not like digital where you can just rattle off a thousand shots in a shoot. Uh, with my cameras, I usually get 10 or 12 per roll. So. Um, it gets expensive after a while, so you're a lot more careful about what you shoot and how you shoot things. So I do everything myself. So obviously shooting the, the photos, um, I develop, uh, develop the photos myself, scan them myself, and then obviously export them to social media or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think the process is just something that can really like get you to forget about everything that's like going on in the world and you kind of are just focused on that one thing. When it's fresh, like when you just first mix it, it's very endothermic, which means it reacts with heat. So you have to make sure that it doesn't explode. As you can see right here, it's happened a few times. That's from bullets exploding on the, right here. Just take it out here. And then, normally I would hang it up here. Uh, some tape here. So the film would be on this thing and it would be wrapped around the spool but you would put that in the dark like in complete darkness you would put the film on there so after you take the film out I just hang it up here let it dry for about a couple hours or so and then we scan. It's a really cool process though. I've never known how to develop film and didn't know it was that much effort to get those pictures. But honestly, you've seen his work well worth the process. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said earlier, that you can't replicate the film look. So people are still wanting to get that look because it looks so good and so unique. Um, and I think it's just like, you know, how vintage, vintage things are coming back, like, you know, record players and people are trying to bring back like 80s, 90s styles and stuff. So I think it's part of that where it's like more vintage and cool now, I guess.
after you take the shot, like, like John, you're supposed to advance it. Yeah. I just don't advance it, and okay. I just do that again. It's actually like super easy <laughs> on, sick, though. on these, yeah. So is that how you did the uh, the girl on fire mm. one? Yeah. It was kind of an accident how I learned how to do it on the uh, Mamiya over there because I just forgot to advance the frame and I was like, oh, this looks sick. And I'm like, yeah. and I realized, I was like, oh, that's why it looks like that because yeah, those, I didn't advance it. Those prints turned out really, really cool. Yeah, no, I really like them. I want to get them framed. But I mean, I think digital was kind of like the new wave around the time. So people just kind of not forgot it. Well, I would say kind of forgot about it. Like it was kind of like a thing of the past. So maybe like, okay. So I think it's kind of like old video games, right? Like, you know, the Nintendo 64s and Sega Genesis and all that. Like they're still cool, but even now, like those aren't, people collect them for like vintage purposes, but like they're not functional really anymore if that makes any sense. That was, that's kind of like how it was with the digital, like digital being the, and film being seen as not functional really anymore. And it's not really practical, which I agree, it's not super practical. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's why. It just wasn't really practical anymore. do so we'll import the file into Lightroom the file we just scanned so what I'll do next is I'll white balance the photo out so I'll do it on an area or black balance it rather I'll do it on an area that's supposed to be black which is the border because the border doesn't really doesn't see light and then I'll use an app called negative lab pro to convert the image from the negative to a positive. So we use this app, we just hit control N here and there's my settings for it. Basically just brings the colors back. So once I hit that and once it finishes loading, the colors will be back. Oh my. There you go. What the Film Life Magazine is an Instagram page that I help run. We basically just feature photos from the film community on Instagram. Um, the founder of the page, Mark, Mark Miller, um, posted something on, on the Film Life page asking for curators, and I have no idea how many people responded to him or not, but uh, I responded and we talked a little bit. He asked me a few questions about like how I got started in film and what I specialized in and all that. And he took me on and now I'm part of the team. Um, when I joined the team, the Film Life team, we had about 30,000 followers probably. Now we're approaching 16,000, so we've grown quite a lot in the time that I've been a part of it. But it's super cool to see and it's super inspiring seeing all the work of the film community and it just pushes me to go further and work my craft even harder. How much does one of these rigs run you? Um, I pieced mine together, so I got the body, this part, and the lens for around 190. 190? Yeah, 190. Oh. And then I got this back part for 60, I think. Oh, wow. And then I got this part that lets you rotate it. There's like a specific part just for that. Uh -huh. And I got that for, I think, 60 as well. Dude, I thought you were going to say like 2,000 or something. Oh, no, no. It's actually pretty cheap for the quality of image that you get for, from it. All right. Do you see it as just a trend, or do you think that it's something that could be back for a while? No, I think it's definitely going to be back for a while. I don't know if it'll really ever go away, because, like I said, you can't get the look on digital. Um, I think that it'll just evolve over time, like sure, they're not making many film cameras anymore, but that's part of, so that's part, I think that's part of the art of it, using cameras that were made 30, 40, 50 years ago even, to still capture incredible looking images, uh, even today in the age of digital and mirrorless cameras.